So first off, disclaimer, I got a free press copy of Steel Division 2, so I thought I'd do a short bonus video. Additionally, there's an affiliate link to the game in the description, which provides 15% off to a Steam key. And yes, it's from a legit key reseller. Yet more about this at the end of the video. Note that the game is currently in closed beta. As such, the game is still work in progress and there might be changes and improvement. Now in this video, I will pronounce most German equipment and unit types properly and in some cases provide also some additional information. This was actually planned as a short video, but the plan didn't survive the first contact with the large amount of Steel Division's vehicles and equipment. Note that it's similar guides in the past for games and for German in general, so be sure to check them out in this playlist. First off, a short basic introduction to German words and pronunciation. If you notice already, skip to the display timecode on the screen or the link in the comment section description. Now German words look so long and complicated since we use a lot of compound words. Whereas in English you usually use two separate nouns that are occasionally connected via hyphen. In German we just stick the nouns together and we make big large words out of them. So for instance, assault gun in German is Sturmgeschütz, whereas assault is Sturm and the gun is Geschütz. Note that Sturm also means storm, the weather effect, not the X-Men character. Another important issue is that in German we pronounce the E like it is pronounced in the English word hen. Because if there's an I followed by an E, the E becomes silent, yet it means that the I is spoken slowly. So it is Krieg, not Krieg, which is the German word for war, by the way. And probably the best word that contains both forms of the German E is Kriegsmarine. Note that the E at the end is pronounced, unlike in the English equivalent. And Kriegsmarine, by the way, literally means war navy. Now a short warning about the recording. I recorded this after a Windows update, which means all my audio settings were changed. As such, my voice is sometimes a bit low. This should only be an issue with the vehicles displayed because they are loud in the background. Yet for the most part, everything should be understandable. So, and here we are in the armory, and this is the Aufklärungspanzer 3M. Now, Aufklärung means recon, and Panzer here means tank, and 3M. Clear. Now here you probably see this number here, 4, 2, 3. Now the first number for the company, the second number is the platoon, and the third is the individual tank. So we know this tank was 4th company, 2nd platoon, and the third tank. Now if it would have been a 1 here, it would be the platoon commander. So. Just a minor detail, as you can see, Panzer 3M with, uh, with Schürzen, armor skirts on the side, here on the turret, and here as well. These were made to pack against Russian anti tank rifles and not um, heat ammunition. Nowadays, they usually use for that, but back then, no. So, and um, then here at the equipment, we have the MG34. Das Maschinengewehr 34. So let's go to the Aufklärungspanzer. So here we have equipment KWK 42L-70. Kampfwagenkanone. Das KWK, which basically means tank gun, or Kampfwagen is battle car or battle wagon. And 42, yeah. And L-70, this is the the caliber length. So this basically means you have the caliber and 70 times is the barrel length. Now here we have the Aufklärungspanzer 4J, which yeah, the Panzer 4. And here you, as many of you probably know, you can see the rings here, which usually indicated how many kills a tank or a gun had. Then here we have the yeah, Kampfwagen 40. Nothing new here for now. So let's head on to the Aufklärer. So these were Recon guys. They were equipped with two MP40. 
MP40 or Maschinenpistole 40. Maschinenpistole literally translated means machine pistol, but it's called submachine gun. Which can be quite confusing because submachine gun is a shortcut is SMG, which is schweres MG, heavy machine gun in German. So if you speak with a German and you mention SMG, he might think about something different. Then to the BMW R75. BMW means Bayerische Motorenwerke. Bavarian Motor Works. And this was technically a schweres Grad. A Grad means Kraftrad, which is basically an old German name for motorcycle, Motorrad. And it was heavy because it has a sidecar. So ein leichtes Grad or a normales Grad was without a sidecar and with a sidecar it was a heavy one, a schweres Grad. And it was a grid with an MG34. Now, the Germans initially used a lot of these, and usually in recon units. This, a reason for this was that German auto industry was not particularly good, but the motorcycle industry, they had a lot of production output, so they used a lot of these instead of cars, where other countries use cars. And here you can actually see the license plate, and here you have a W and the H, so V, and, huh? and this was Wehrmacht and the second was for which branch? A was for the army, here and if it was an L, it was the Luftwaffe and we have in game there are units that have actual license plate from the Luftwaffe I will try to show you if you find it then here we have KFZ4 which means Kraftfahrzeug Kraft means power, Fahrzeug means basically um, vehicle. So I think these were I think these were extremely rare. And the, as you can see here, this this mount here is for anti-aircraft engagement, as far as I know. Then next are Cossacks, which are Cossacks, and they are of course equipped with Soviet equipment. So not much for pronunciation here because I probably get this wrong. Next is the famous Kübelwagen, and this is the Kübelwagen MG. Kübel basically means bucket, and Wagen means car. And here, yeah. Here we have an MG42, by the way. Then the Schwimmwagen, which Schwimm means swimming, so this was an amphibious vehicle. Can you see? Yeah, here you can actually see. You drop this one down, and then you have a, a propeller going. This one you can see. Again, with a mounted machine gun, and it basically means swimming car. Then Sonderkraftfahrzeug 247B. So Sonder means special, Kraftfahrzeug, as mentioned before, power vehicle. And this one actually is really rare. Yeah. I rarely seen this one. I mean, it also says armored personal carrier. Next, we have Sonderkraftfahrzeug 250-1. Now, it's very important. This is 250, and if you look at it, it's rather small. The 251 were the usual armored personal carriers for the Germans, and they were a bit longer. Do we have one here? No, but, but later on. So, it would be probably extend to here or something. And I'm not sure about the 250, but the 251 you can actually determine usually if it was an early or late war variant by how this, the back is shaped. I think the final version only had one straight line, that there was no edge here, it was one, just one triangle here. It was for, for making production easier and everything. So as you can see, if you do this, this probably takes more time for construction. Then here we have the a similar variant equipped with a 20mm auto cannon, HVK 38, Kampfwagen Kanone 38, and also a machine gun. So, the next is the Spätrupp. A Spätrupp basically a recon squad, as you can see, they have quite a 
some firepower, MP40, we covered that already, and then the Gewehr 43. So Gewehr 43 basically means rifle 43. And this was a semi-automatic rifle. So unlike the Karabiner 98 Kurz, the regular carbine used, which was a bolt action rifle. And finally here we have the VK 9.01 which I think is better known, or well, um, probably the prototype designation of the looks, based on a Panzer II chassis, although these are improved, and not the regular, as you can see they are interleaved, and the regular Panzer II didn't have interleaved. Yeah, and, light, uh, and by the way, looks means links. Yeah. And as you can see here, it has a, a special antenna, which usually was reserved for recon units and also command which you will see when we come to the tanks. So next on to the infantry and here we have yeah we have a, uh, a crowd with a sidecar again and FUH means Führer which basically means leader or sometimes commander so in some cases you have German units where you translate the Führer with leader in English I think squad leader for instance but for instance, in German you say it was a company Führer, and in English you say usually company commander. So Germans usually always used Führer, leader, and in English you have sometimes leader and sometimes commander. So if you go with the direct translation, it might not always be correct. Then here we have Ersatztruppen, which means replacement troops, and they are equipped with an AP-40 for the leader of the squad, I guess, and Acht Karabiner, 98 Kurz, eight Carbine, 89 Short. Now, Ersatztruppen. Units usually had a Feldersatzbataillon. This is where they trained their troops that were brought in from, from the home front and then give them the final training. You could say green troops, basically, and not fully trained yet. Now, the next are Feldschandemarie, which means which is basically the military police and it may, means field gendarmerie so field police or military police and they were also called Kettenhunde which means chain dogs dog chains and you're probably gonna ask why and you actually can see this here you see this big plate here this um, signified that they were of the Feldgendarmerie and this was with a chain hung around the necks. This is why they were also called Kettenhunde. So next is the Grenadierführer, so uh, basically a leader unit. And yeah, here we have a new weapon, Nebelhandgranate, which means smoke hand grenade. Then we have Grenadiers, and the DP here. I don't think it's official, this is more in-game, it refers to the machine gun, to the Soviet DP-28. Now they're also equipped with a Soviet submachine gun and a Panzerfaust 60. Panzerfaust is armored fist, you could also say tank fist, but yeah, armored fist is actually more correct. I noted this incorrectly in one of my videos. Because there's actually um, a publication, a Warhammer publication, which I didn't had access at the time when I did the video. And it's more like Armored Fist. The problem is, it can mean both. There's a, actually, the meaning sometimes changes with the terminology, which I will go into when we come to the Panzerschreck. And the 60 here, the 60, means the range. So... There was also a Panzerfaust, I think the first one was 30, so 30 meters range and then a 100 and I think a 150, but I don't think that's all production. So next are Jäger Pioneer. Now Jäger basically means Hunter. Jäger were usually light infantry. They were and also to a certain degree elite troop, not necessarily a semi elite. So Fallschirm Jäger for instance, parachute, uh, airborne troops. And Pioneer is Engineers, as, as here they're called Assault Engineers. They're equipped with 
weapons you have. Oh, this one is new. Gebal Delano, which is a bundle charge, and this is basically the regular Stielhand Granate, stick and grenade, but with additional charges. So you took the head of the stick grenade. I think there are six or five or six around bundled around the demon stick grenade in the center. Then here we have Ostruppen, which means East Troops. And these were basically voluntary or, well, not necessary voluntary troops that were pressed into service by the Wehrmacht, usually from, from various regions occupied. Then engineers, Junior, and they have, yeah, same equipment as usual. So there's a difference between Pioneer and Sturm Pioneer, which we have done here. Yeah, I will cover them there. Then here we have Pioneer SVT, which also is a in-game designation because they were equipped with the semi-automatic rifle of the Soviets. So this is basically Soviet equipment, except for the Gewalt Alarm. Then here we have the Pioneer Führer, which is basically the engineer leader. Then Panzergrenadierführer. Now Panzergrenadier is a bit tricky. They were originally called Motorisierte Schützen, Motorized Rifleman, and then later renamed into Panzergrenadier. Panzergrenadier is usually translated with mechanized infantry. The direct translation would be Tank Grenadier. Now the problem with Panzergrenadier, as pointed out in many of my videos, is they had basically two variants. The one which were just motorized, they were trained to fight with tanks, but they had no access to armored personal carriers. And then Panzergrenadiere gepanzert. These were the guys that were actually in units with armored personal carriers, like the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 250. Panzergrenadier does not necessarily mean it was mechanized infantry, but it meant these guys were trained to fight with tanks in coordination, which is very important because regular infantry had quite troubles fighting with tanks because they usually overestimated their capability. Now here we have Reiter Jäger, which basically Reiter means rider and Jäger means hunter. So yeah, this were basically probably cavalry units at one point. And the same here, we have them equipped with the MP44, the Maschinenpistole 44, later known as the Sturmgewehr 44. So Submachine Gun 44 or Assault Rifle 44. And then we have a Reiterführer, which is basically the rider leader or cavalry leader. Then Stoßtrupp. Stoß is basically the thrust. And it's an assault squad. So yeah. And they were equipped with a mixture of in this case of Soviet and German equipment. And finally, Sturmpioniere. Now Sturmpioniere were special trained assault engineers, and you probably know them best from the German movie Stalingrad when they brought in Sturmpioniere into Stalingrad. These were special trained units and as far as I remember, the largest size of them was battalions. And from what I know, the depiction in the movie is actually more or less correct. And I think it was Jeschenek, which was the general staff officer of the Luftwaffe, who issued basically that they get in some assault engineers some Sturm Pioniere to Stalingrad for the fighting there when it was already going on for quite some while. And they were equipped with a Flammenwerfer 41, Flamethrower 41. So let's switch to the tanks. First we have a Beute Stalin. Beute means loot. So a captured one, a captured Stalin. Yeah, this is all Soviet equipment, so not much to add here. Then Hunter A, as you can see, 3rd company, 2nd platoon, 5th tank. So um, basically for the Panther, the A version was the 2nd one. The 1st was the Panther D, the 2nd was the Panther A and the 3rd was the Panther G. 
here. We actually have no painted D's here anymore because, well, it's 9044. And here you see the difference now. Did you see this? Here's one antenna. And for the Führer, for the Befehlspanther, we have uh, another one, another antenna. And for instance, the Panzer Museum Monster has a, has a Befehlspanther. Befehlspanther. With such a additional antenna. And here we have the Panther G. This was the newest version of the Panther. The Panther F, I don't think it's a main spread service, was the, was the latest variant and it had a, a smaller turret as far as I know. Now, as you can see, the Panther Gs don't have any antennas. I assume this is because it's still working products. Anyway. Let's go to one of my favorite, Panzer 3L, a Panzerkampfwagen 3L. As you can see, this one has no shirts at all, and it has the long belt 50mm gun. Then the Panzer 4G, this one has shirts again. Now here you can see a captured T-34, and in parentheses the R means Russisch which is Russian, because the German's clock is always Russian. So, and here the interesting part is, as you can see, this is a German commander's cupola on top. So this is what the Germans usually did. If they, if they modified them, they put it, their own commander's cupola on there. Now here are one of the favorites, the Sturmgeschütz 3G, the Stuck 3G. Here you can see the gun mantle, and this is called a Saukopf blender. So Saukopf means pig head, and blend is basically a mantle. So yeah, this was the pig head mantle. Very. The other ones previously were more were not like this is cast ammo, I assume, yeah. And the others were usually welded ammo, like the other stuff. Then the same as a as a lead vehicle, and here we have yeah. My all-time favorite, the Panzerkampfwagen 6 Ausführung, or Tiger E in this case. Well, so much for the tanks, let's go to the support units. And here we have the command variant of the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 251. Then we also have a Sturmgeschütz 3F. As you can see, this one has not a Saublende. This one has the more edgy version of the gun mantle. And here we have, as here we don't have a KV car, we have a Sturm, a Sturmkanone. So this basically, Sturm means assault, or but also Storm, but in this case it means assault. So this is an assault cannon in the assault gun. Then here we have a replacement machine gun. As you can see it's called a Schweres MG 34, because it's on a tripod. And here we have the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 251 with flamethrowers equipped. And this is a S Flammenwerfer, which means schwerer Flammenwerfer, which means heavy flamethrower. As you can see, there are two mounted. And yeah, Schrägstrich 16 slash 16 was referring to the subvariant with flamethrowers equipped. Then we have the Grille. And if you look at it, you probably can immediately tell on which tank this was based upon. Panzer 38T, Czech tank. You can see on the chassis. And Grille means cricket. And it was equipped with an SEG 33. SEG means Schweres Infanteriegeschütz. Heavy Infantry Support Gun. Then we have the Horch 108. Now Horch. You probably don't know this company now, but in a way you do. Because Hawk was the predecessor of Audi, which you probably know. And the funny thing is, Hawk is in German imperative for listen, and Audi is the imperative for listen in Latin. So that's quite a connection. Then here we have the Infanteriegeschütz 18, the infantry support gun. Then the Kettengrad. This is Kettengrad means basically chain motorcycle because Grad is the short version of Kraftrad, which means power bike. 
and power bike or grad was basically an early version for motorrad which is a motorbike and these were usually used to pull stuff around so they were used to pull airplanes around and all kinds of equipment then here we have the Kraftfahrzeug 70 which means yeah and then we have a commandant which is a commander next is Kosaken Granatwerfer 50 Kosaken Cossacks Granatwerfer 36 so this is the caliber and this is the year of introduction or more or less and now this is important Granatwerfer because there was a change in name Nowadays, the Germans call a Granatwerfer Mörser, which is mortar, and a Granatwerfer was also a mortar. But back, and nowadays, a Granatwerfer is actually a grenade launcher. So you have this change. Sometimes people point out in the comment section, usually the Germans, that I got this wrong, that it was called Mörser, and I said, no, it was called a Granatwerfer back then, because the meaning of the name changed. Also Mörser, yeah, the, the thing is with Mörser, original Mörser was more of an older weapon and the Germans also had a Mörser, which for instance the 21 centimeter one, they called them Mörser to a certain degree as well, which were big artillery guns. So, because they're old Mör Mörser and they're new, so yeah, it's complicated as you can tell. So, but in the second world, what they called the mortars, Granatwerfer. Nowadays they call them Mörser. And here now we have an interesting new one. We have a Maultier, a mule. And Mun here in case is for in-game is a munitions truck. And I think here we have actually Luftwaffe license plate. Can you see? WL. And this is an Opel Blitz, yeah. Yeah, so basically this is an Opel Blitz, but the rear wheels are replaced with tracked wheels and with tracks so that they can move better in unsuitable or less suitable terrain like in the Soviet Union or where there were no roads or where everything was cropped up as and here we have the regular open blitz as you can see a slight modification and here we have the RSO Raupen Schlepper Ost now Raupen or Raupen means caterpillar Schlepper is the hauler or tag or you could also go literally you can go puller and Ost means East. Now, there's actually a bit of a story with this vehicle, a personal one. Um, as some of you might know, I'm in the credits of of IL-2, the game, Stormovic. And because I sent Oleg Maddox, the once the, I think, chief of the company, quite a lot of scans of photographs and also blueprints when he was developing the game, when it when the internet was not so well and not everything was available he once asked me for this vehicle and i never heard of it back then Raupenschlepper Ost, what never heard of this one and no no book and nothing and the funny thing is this was actually produced in large numbers and i think mainly or only in austria as well so it was like i guess it was like okay so you don't I never heard of this and this is probably something that shows you well, logistics and everything is usually not appreciated too. So this one, Raupen Schlepper Ost. Basically three, three words put together in one big compound word. And this is why they have to make a shortcut because it wouldn't fit in here probably. Ah, and this one is similar, with, equipped with a Panzerbüchse 41. Panzerbüchse, this was basically the German name for anti-tank rifle. Büchse is basically an old name for rifle. Then here we have the Sturmhaubitze 42. Now originally the, the Sturmgeschütze were go back basically to the first world war. I covered this in one of my videos. Because they needed guns that supported the infantry when it was moving forward. So they introduced the Sturmgeschütze. But the Sturmgeschütze after Barbarossa or during Barbarossa basically were pressed more into a tank hunter role so an anti-tank role additionally you also notice the 75 mm gun it lacks a bit of punch sometimes and so they introduced the assault howitzer because 
worm again or salt and hobbits is how it's up. And this one has a 105 millimeter. Now let's move to the anti-tank. And here we have a captured weapon again. FK means Feldkanone, field cannon or field gun probably is better. And yeah, in parentheses R for Russisch or Russian. Then here we have the mm, usually called the Hetzer, but it was never called the Hetzer during the war. This is some error, which is actually rather slow. We use Hetzer doesn't make too much sense. Um, the Jagdpanzer 38T. As you can see again, it's based on the Panzer 38T. And now, interestingly, originally it was internally called Leichter Panzerjäger 38T. Like Light Tank Hunter 38T. And then it was renamed into Jagdpanzer, which means Jagd is the hunt, Panzer is the tank, so hunt tank, but yeah, tank hunter also. But Panzerjäger literally means tank hunter. Now, here we have the Marta 1, which means Martin, so the animal. And this was equipped with a pack 40. So then here we have the Marder 3, the Marder 3. As you can see again, and the 38T chassis. And equipped with a Soviet 76mm gun, which the Germans usually called Ratsch Bum from the sound it makes. So you can't really translate Ratsch Bum, I think. And sadly, there's very, very limited information on the gun out there because I recently tried to get some information on some guns. And basically, on Wikipedia, you look at the articles, and every source is written in, in Russian. And I also asked some people who know more, and they also said, Yeah, there are basically only Russian books. In it. So, yeah, if you know a good English or German book on some guns, please let me know in the comment section. Then here we have a captured Soviet 45mm gun, so Pack, ah yeah, Pack uh, means Panzerabwehrgeschütz, which means anti-tank gun, or literally anti-tank cannon. Then why this is still used in 1944, I don't know. This is the Pack 36, 37mm gun, already in 1940 and 1941 was called Heres Anklopfgerät, Army Door Knocker Device because against heavy tanks it was not really suited. I mean, as you can see, this thing was really had a high tactical mobility. Because it was rather small and not so heavy, so these two, three guys could move it around rather fast. If you compare it with this one, for instance, you can see the trouble, and if you go with this one, yeah, you, you really can see the difference in tactical mobility. So this is the Pack 40, 75mm, and here we have the Pack 43, Pack 43, 88mm, 88mm. This was basically, a, yeah, this was the anti-tank gun version of the famous or infamous Plug 88, Plug 36. Which brings us to the anti-air guns, and here we have the Plug 38, 20mm. So FLAG means Flugabwehrkanone, which means anti-aircraft cannon, and yeah, or gun. Then we have the FLAG 41. Now this is not only the FLAG, this is also the FLAG with the Sonderanhänger, which is the special trailer. This was specifically built for this gun. And you could fire it we're, while still mounted, I mean this one is, is this one is semi deployed because if you deploy it fully, you have you have these sponsors out there and you have those in the back, so they are deployed to the side but not to the back as you can see here. But you could also fire it to a limited degree if it was still mounted on the trailer completely, but not against air targets, against ground targets, and those two. Also, the the angle was limited. And these cables here are for connecting with the, the command device and everything, because they were usually set up in a special way. Something I will cover in a future video. So, yeah. And this is also, this variant has the, has the ground protection shield mounted. 
Denn der Flak 43 37 mm, der Flak 43 37 mm. Dann der Gepard und as you can see again Panzer 38 and with the Flak 38. And then here one with a Flak feeling of a quad. Flak. But yeah, feeling means quad. Now here we have Batterieführer. The battery leader or battery commander. Then here we have the Beobachtung. So yeah. Observation plane. Dieseler Storch. Storch is the stork here. And in this game it commands off map artillery, namely the Mörser, Mortar, 18, 21 centimeters. So these were the heavy artillery that the Germans used, or some of the heavy artillery. Okay, then we have the Beobachtungskübelwagen, so artillery observer, yeah. And with the leichte Feldhobitze 18, M. And again for... Oh, this is interesting. Can you tell which one this is? It's K532. Gamma F. So K532 parenthesis F. So this was originally a French artillery gun. The next one. Ah, the Kanone 18. Oh, here we have a, a Scherenfernrohr. A scissors binocular. This is the Kanone, the basically Canon 18. And here we have artillery observer. Yeah, here they're called Beobachter, usually they were called Vorgeschobene Beobachter, Forward Observers. And they were equipped with an MP28 Bergmann. Bergmann is a name, but it literally means Mountain Man. And yeah, Submachine Gun 28. And here, French Field Gun, Feldkanone 331 F. This is, yeah, 1897. And so then the Granatwerfer 42, and then of course the Hummel, based on a Pan Panzer IV chassis. But this could actually be there was there was a there was at one point the idea to have one unified chassis for the Panzer III and IV, the Panzer III IV chassis. Could be this this it's I have to read up on this more. There's some detail so. Hummel means bumblebee. And as far as I know, this was not an official name. But nobody cared. And it has the Schwere Feldhaubitze 18. So this was the 150mm artillery. Yeah, but looks, let's look at the Vespa. You can see this is based on the Panzer II chassis. Therefore, for artillery. Or Panzer artillery, as the Germans call it, basically tank artillery. And this one has the 105mm, like the Feldhobitz 18. And then here we have the Wurfrahmen 40. Now, Wurfrahmen means basically um, pro frame. Yeah. Sounds very, <laughs> very nice. The Wurf is fro or throwing, and the Rahmen is frame. Here you can see the Sprenggranate. Spreng is the explosion and Granate is the grenade. Or in this case it would probably explosive projectile or shell. Then here we have the Leichte Feldhobitze 18M. So this was basically the standard German artillery gun for infantry throughout the whole war. This, these were in the Leichte Abteilungen in the light battalions. Now the Germans used for for tanks and for artillery. They didn't use battalion, they used Abteilung, which directly translated means detachment, but due to we know which size they were, they're usually translated with battalion. Or sometimes people know both. So, but detachment is often not a as um, not determined in size, whereas battalion is usually also was abteilung. 
Oder oh, whatever, some minor differences. Oh, so. Then the schwere Feld of 18, which was part of the schwere Abteilungen, the heavy battalions. This I covered in my, both these guns I covered a bit in my artillery video, which if you haven't seen it, you should check it out because it's all done on primary source. And here we have the schwere Kanone 18, 1.5 mm. So, from what I know, these were long, the these were these had a longer range and you were usually used for counter battery fire as well. Finally, to the air units, this one, this one is the AR 66C, which is for Arado, which you probably best know for the Arado 64, the German jet bomber. Now here we have the Dornier 215B, Dornier 215B4, equipped with an MG15, then we have the Dornier 217, and as you can see this one has a, this one is a night fighter variant, Nachtjäger, and the Fokkewurf 190A8, and here we have the Gotha 145B, then the Heinkel 111H16. As you can here see SC means Sprengbombe cylindrisch. Means explosive bomb cylindrical. Then the famous Stucker. Stucker is short for Sturzkampfbomber, which basically means dive bomber. And this one is the Junker 87E3. Junker 78. And here you have an MG 81 Z. Now the Z means, if you look closer, you can probably tell these are two barrels, means swelling, twin. Then the D5, you can see with the 20mm in the wings. Now this is the Abwurf Behälter 250. Abwurf basically means dropping or release. And Behälter is a container, so it was the drop container 250, which was an anti-personal cluster bomb. Then the famous Junkers 87G, the G variant of the Stucker, also called Kanonenvogel, Cannon Bird, so literally. So these are 37 mm gun parts. Big H here means board cannone, which means board cannon, board gun. Then the Messerschmitt 109G2. And G is usually called Gustav, because this was the phonetical alphabet from the Germans. Then we have another Gustav equipped with Werfergranate 21. So Werfer means thrower and Granate means grenade. So thrower grenade 21. Same equipped with a Sprengbombe 250. And here we have the Messerschmitt 410, Messerschmitt 410, and it was sometimes called also Hornisse, which is Hornet. Yeah, it had quite a sting, especially with the 50mm gun and the board cannon at 5. Yeah, I think that's about all. Now, in case you want to know more about the game, here is my short overview. I would say basically if you like the predecessor, Steel Division Normandy 44, Steel Division 2 will be also to your liking. Now, there are several improvements, namely the map sizes are far bigger. Artillery in most cases can now reach the whole map, so artillery range is sometimes not even indicated anymore. Additionally, the deck building, so setting up your troops is more flexible. So for instance, you can select the unit phase now yourself. Previously you had like, it was more limited, and now you can select it, but you decrease the number of units and you can also change the veterancy level of the units as well. Furthermore, the final game will include a campaign mode as well, but that is so far not part of the beta and I'm really looking forward to that part. Also, you can activate NATO counters in game and we all know that NATO counters are love. Personally, I think it is one of the few games that portrays combined arms with her properly, something I explained a bit more in detail on Steel Division Normandy 44 about one or two years ago. Then again, this also means that it's not a particularly easy game, so in my opinion this is not a game for the casual player. 
Now, if you're interested in the game and also want to support my channel, feel free to use the affiliate link in the description. I would also add a non-affiliate link to Games Planet as well. Note that it is 15% cheaper than on Steam and you will get a legitimate Steam key. And yes, Games Planet is an official and authorized key reseller. Of course, make sure to check out the region information in the notice screen for the region locks, because depending on the Games Planet store, it's locked for a certain country or a certain region. And also, Games Planet now has a United States store. If you have any suggestions for other games where I should give a pronunciation guide, please let me know in the comments. And also, a big thank you here to Eugene Games for providing a press conference. Thank you for watching and see you next time.